My own personal experience with abortion, and I don't think we talk about this enough, abortion can be another word for mercy. Our country has failed us! I'm very excited about this daily cancellation. I finally get a chance to cancel Anne Hathaway. Um, I've held a grudge against this woman ever since my wife, early in our marriage, forced me to go to the theater with her, with her mom and her sister, to watch Les Miserables. Um, it was the worst experience of my life. Every actor in the film was deeply and painfully annoying. None of them would stop singing at all. They sang the entire time from start to finish. Yet even amidst all of that, Anne Hathaway managed to be irritating and insufferable on a level that even Russell Crowe's blubbering off-key performance couldn't reach. A couple of years later, I went with much higher hopes to go see Interstellar. And there was Anne Hathaway again, helping to ruin the film with her cringy, saccharine speeches about the transcendent power of love. I wanted to see a movie about deep space exploration. I was hoping there'd be aliens. Instead, I got no aliens, only a little bit of space exploration, in exchange for a lot of scenes of Anne Hathaway and Jessica Chastain sulking and whining and giving corny sermons. You son of a bitch. The only thing that would have made it worse is if they started singing. But thankfully, they didn't. All that to say, this cancellation is a long time coming. Hathaway's appearance this week on The View has, uh, I think, finally provided me the opportunity that I've been waiting for Let's watch. The Devil is Prada did uh, turn 16 this summer. Yes. The time flies, boy. So you wrote this on Instagram. Quote, I am struck by the fact that the young female characters in this movie built their lives and careers in a country then honored their right to have choice over their own reproductive health. See you in the fight. So why did you write that? Why was it important to you, for, to, you to write something like that? Because we're in the fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in the fight every day. We're in the fight every minute. And you mentioned the Devil's Prada turning sweet 16. Yeah. Some 16-year-old's life has been irrevocably changed yeah. because of the current overturning of Roe v. Wade. I think about it all the time. I think we all think about it all the time. Yeah. And, um, and what its implications are and what it means to live in a country that puts us in this position. Again. To Again. Freaking again! Yeah. yeah. Again. Oh, shit. Here we go again. This is not a moral conversation about abortion. Right. This is a practical conversation about women's rights. Yeah. And by the way, human rights, because women's rights are human rights. And the freedom that we all need to be able to, to choose and build our lives and have access to excellent health care. So let's try to sift through this. She says that uh, it, it grieves her to consider that the young female characters in Devil Wears Prada would not be able to have abortions if the film was set in the current day. It is, to begin with, extremely strange to worry about the availability of abortion for fictional characters. Also, again, not having seen it, my impression is that the movie has a rather dim view of selfish, career-obsessed people. Um, that's like the, the Devil Wears Prada. That's so, so part of the moral of the story from what I understand, is that there's more to life than professional ambition. Yet Hathaway's takeaway is that women need to be able to kill their children so they can focus more on career advancement. There seems to be a little bit of a disconnect here. She also speaks about reproductive destiny, which of course is exactly the sort of asinine, hackneyed phrase you would expect Anne Hathaway to use when discussing abortion. Um, it's, it's, it's not the sort of wording that I would ever choose, but since she brought it up, let us ask this question. Once a woman has conceived a child, what is her reproductive destiny? The word destiny implies a force outside of the individual, a message, a mission from beyond ourselves. So what is this force? Call it nature, call it the universe, call it as I do, God. What is this force trying to say to the woman? What is her destiny now that she has conceived the child in her womb? Is it her destiny to partake in the joy and beauty and fulfillment of motherhood? Good idea, oh Lord. Of course it's a good idea. Or is it her destiny to pay some abortionist to kill her baby and throw his body into a medical waste dumpster? I would say the former. Indeed, how could it be anyone's reproductive destiny to reject their reproductive capacity and violently destroy the human life that they have reproduced? To call such a choice reproductive destiny seems uh, bizarre, to say the least. Hathaway also claims that she's not interested in having a moral conversation about abortion, but rather a practical conversation about women's rights. Well, except that a conversation about rights is automatically a conversation about morality. You cannot extract the concept of morality from the concept of human rights. 
a practical conversation, a real practical conversation, is one that is not concerned with theories or ideas at all. But human rights are a theory. They are an idea. They're a moral idea. That isn't to say they don't exist, but rather that they exist in the moral realm. They don't exist physically, practically, like a chair or a rock or the ocean exists. So to say that you don't want to talk about morality, you just want to talk about human rights, that is to speak gibberish. Human rights are a moral concept. The minute you bring them up, you have entered into the moral realm. But that's not where Anne Hathaway wants to be because she knows that she can't actually defend abortion on moral grounds. None of these people can. And that's the issue. But she had more to say, and it only gets dumber from here, so let's continue. Without going into too many details, my own personal experience with abortion, and I don't think we talk about this enough, abortion can be another word for mercy. We know that no two pregnancies are alike, and it mm-hmm. follows that no two lives are alike. That follows that no two conceptions are alike. Yep. Mm-hmm. So how can we have a law? How can we have a, a, a point of view on this that says we must treat everything the same? And where I come at it from is when you allow for choice, you allow for flexibility, which is what we need in order to be human. Abortion is another word for mercy, she says. But mercy for whom? Genocide. Mercy. Mercy for the child who's being killed? That's not mercy. The child has an entire life ahead of him. Or he should. You're taking that away. You're you're deciding for him that his life is not worth living. You're erasing all of his potential. All that could have been. There's no mercy in that. It's the opposite of mercy because it's the opposite of empathy. And you can't have mercy without empathy. Or do you mean that it's merciful to the woman? Are you saying that killing a child is an act of mercy to the child's mother? Well, no, mercy to the mother is to help her, to give her the resources she needs. Mercy is what pregnancy centers provide. Mercy is their ministry. It's what they do. Abortion clinics, on the other hand, are vultures. They prey on fear and misery. They cash in on it. They feed off of it. They profit off of it. They sell guilt. They sell regret. They sell loneliness while taking away the love and joy of motherhood. That's not mercy. It's mercenary. So whichever way Hathaway meant it, she's wrong. Though I'm not sure she knows how she meant it because she's just babbling, which is what most defenses of abortion boil down to. Incoherent babble. And that is why Anne Hathaway is today, finally, after all these years, canceled. What's the biggest summer secret to uh, a great looking, glowing summer complexion? It's having great skincare products from our friends at GenuCell. You know, dehydrated skin covered in dark spots and even puffier bags under the eyes are a problem for all of us. GenuCell's beautifully curated Summer Essentials Package is a limited edition package that includes their one-of-a-kind Ultra Retinol Super Moisturizer. Their Ultra Retinol is a powerful plant extract alternative to retinol without the harsh side effects, and it's perfectly safe for use in the summer sun. Plus, you'll get GenuCell's classic skincare therapy for under eye bags and puffiness and concentrated vitamin C serum to nourish your skin for a visibly clear complexion with a glow that will get compliments everywhere you go. Our assistant director, Austin, has freakishly large under eye bags and they seem to be growing every day. It looks like his skin is slowly shriveling up and it's all just becoming one giant under eye bag. It's grotesque to look at. Needless to say, it's extremely upsetting for me. It really puts me in a bad headspace before I start my show. So I've forced Austin to start using GenuCell. And just like magic, his eyes no longer look like they uh, packed bags for a month-long vacation overseas. So go to GenuCell.com slash WalshYT right now to get your GenuCell Summer Essentials Package. Just for the summer, every subscription order includes a customized summer spa gift box absolutely free. It's GenuCell.com slash WalshYT. GenuCell.com slash WalshYT. For our daily cancellation, we turn to American Idol. Most interesting thing about this show is that it is apparently still on the air. Um, I don't know if it's an indication that I'm out of touch or that American Idol is irrelevant, but until this moment, I thought American Idol was canceled years ago. Be that as it may, um, it was back in the cultural conversation ever so briefly this week, but not for anything related to music or singing. Instead, it was the story of one contestant, and more specifically, a judge's reaction to that story that had people talking. Watch. In May 2018, um, a gunman walked into my school. I was in art room one, and he shot up art room two before he made his way to art room one. Uh, lost a lot of friends. Uh, eight, eight, eight students were killed, uh, two teachers were killed, and uh, 
It's just really been negative, man. Santa Fe's had a bad rap here since 2018. What you doing, Katie? Our country has failed us. Facts. This is not okay. You should be singing here because you love music. It's true. Not because you don't have to go through that I agree. You didn't have to lose eight friends. I hope that you remind people that we have to change. Because you know what? I'm scared too. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. Now, before we deal with the substance of Katy Perry's response to the extent that it had any substance, we cannot ignore the incredible narcissism on display here by her. You know what? I'm scared too. He is calmly recounting his own horrific experience, and Perry uses it as a platform to put this to put on this over-the-top emotional performance. She even relates it back to herself somehow. As her fellow judges comfort her, they start patting her on the back and comforting her while the kid who was actually in the shooting stands there and watches. Here's a hint. If someone is telling you about something awful that happened to them, your response should not contain the words I or me unless you're saying something like I'm so sorry or I'm here for you. But if you're attempting to put yourself at the center of this person's suffering or deflect from it so that the focus is on you and your own emotions then you are a classic narcissist. And maybe worst of all, you're creating an incredibly awkward situation for everyone else who has to be in the room with your lack of self-awareness. I can only imagine how uncomfortable it must have been for that young man to be standing there, not sure what to say or how to respond as Katy Perry launches into her camera-ready monologue like she's auditioning for a soap opera. A monologue that was planned, by the way, considering that the judges would have known ahead of time that a contestant was coming up who'd been in a mass shooting. I mean, I, I understand that this is a very cynical interpretation of events, but I've been around long enough and I've been in media long enough and I've met enough of these sorts of people to justify my cynicism. But what about the actual point she was making in her scripted uh, diatribe? She says that uh, the country has failed the victims and survivors of this school shooting. And of course, she means specifically that it failed by not passing enough gun control laws to prevent the shooting from happening. Never mind that the shooter already broke a dozen different laws in carrying out his crime. It's unclear how exactly it would have helped to add one or two more laws onto the pile that the killer was already determined to disregard. You can only make an act illegal so many times before the laws start to become redundant and therefore useless. Yeah, this is what we so often do in our culture. When a bad thing happens, we, we declare that the bad thing is the result of some sort of failure. It's always a systemic failure, failure of government, of policy. People like Katy Perry take solace in the idea that all tragedies are policy failures because, and really all bad things, you know, they say poverty is a policy failure too. Because for one thing, it gives them an excuse to push their political agenda, obviously. But for another, it comforts them to think that the right policies, if we could finally land on them, would banish all the bad things from our midst. When Perry says that the country failed because there was a school shooting, what she means is that we ought to have a country where there are no shootings at all. And she's right in the sense that every mass shooting and every bad thing shouldn't happen. That's why it's a very bad thing. If there's something that's evil, like any evil shouldn't happen. But Perry, like any other leftist, believes that a country without any murder, without any bad people doing bad things, is actually practically achievable and that it can be achieved through policy. The irony, of course, is that the utopianists who imagine that a world of perfect peace and harmony can really be achieved tend through their policies to create a world that is ever farther away from peace and harmony. Worlds like uh, the world of Chicago, for example. People with Katy Perry's worldview run most of our major American cities, and most of our major American cities are violent, crime, and disease-ridden hellholes. Which actually isn't all that ironic when you realize that effective governance means understanding human nature. And understanding human nature means acknowledging that bad people will always exist and they will always do bad things. It's still true that a school shooting represents a failure. In fact, it's a whole series of failures. But they're mostly the kinds of failures that Katy Perry and her ilk never want to talk about. And they're the kinds of failures we skip over, focusing instead on debates over gun control. And that itself is also a failure. One which only ensures that this kind of thing will keep happening with the same or greater frequency. 
And that is why Katy Perry is today finally canceled.